Hello, I'm going to try to teach you, well this is going to be a series on how to make a text RPG game and the first installment here is going to be uh, how to make a map. So what you want to do, first and foremost, uh, make a file called world.py, leave it empty for now. You want to open up a spreadsheet program and it can be anything like uh, Excel or in my case LibreOffice Calc and you want to make a an even map so it would be for example 5 by 5 or 10 by 10 you know 5 and then 5 etc etc you want to have a spawn tile and I just threw this together because I'm just trying to teach you how to do it um, but yours can be any way you'd like it to be um, so once you have your uh, your map all planned out and such highlight everything and then copy it go over to an empty text document and paste it in and you'll notice that they have even spaces and everything so now what you'll need to do go ahead and close out of the after you have the oops after you have the or after you goodness after you copied over the uh, the tiles then you go back to world.py and make sure you save your uh, your text file as something like mapped.txt okay so what we're going to do now is we're going to create our map okay so first we need to know oh, this also assumes that you know about different types of variables um, a little bit of uh, working with files and you don't necessarily need to know about classes but it helps and you're not gonna don't worry I'll try to explain it as much as possible so now we have our variable level now we also need to put a starting position which will be a tuple and we'll just call it zero zero for now it'll it will change it once we get into loading tiles so def for define function load tiles no parameters in this and then inside of this we do with open now open or with just automatically closes the file once we're done with that this little block of code here so with open map.txt comma r for read as f so we just gave it a file handle so now we can refer to that file as f so then what you want to do is rows equals f dot read lines and that literally just reads the lines uh, now you do x max which is the maximum length of the x uh, axis so in this case it would be a uh, obviously if you don't if you don't already know x axis is this is uh, left and right y is up and down next we so x max <coughs> is the length of the zero with element of the rows which is the first element and we want to split it at the tabs and that's what this is this is a special character for tabs Next, we need to loop. So we do for y in range length of uh, rows. Now what this does is it makes a range from zero to whatever the length of the rows is. And that's how many times we're gonna loop. So then we do calls for columns, rows, y, which is what iteration we're at, dot split again at the t, at the t, goodness, at the tabs now we want to make what's called a try and accept and all this does is it tries a block of code and if it gets an error then it runs what's in the accept so good practice is just to make sure you have accept down there just so you don't forget it because i've done that a lot now we need to loop again for x in range x max and since x max up here is uh is a number you don't need to do anything else to it it's just range x from zero to whatever the length of your x axis is. Now we need to make a tile name calls dot oh look at that. So columns at the x element which is the current iteration we're at. So the first iteration would be zero. So it's the first element. And then we want to replace the replace. Replace the new line and that's what that is this is just a special character for a new line with nothing okay and what this does is if um, the current element is has or is a new line then or has it then we want to replace that with an empty empty quotes so 
now we need to do if tile name is equals to the empty quotes, then we want to make a tuple inside of our dictionary at those coordinates. And the coordinates here are the iteration of x and the iteration of y. So when this is zero, oops, so when y is zero, this can this will be zero, one, two, three, four, five, and then whatever the range or your uh, the length of your x-axis is. So how many elements you have in uh, in this, then that's how many times x will iterate. And once you get once this inner loop gets uh, to the, that number, then it stops that loop and it uh, increments that. And so let's say zero, and then this will execute however many times this is. So in my case, it's five, and then it'll change this to a one, which is the second iteration, and then do this again. And that's how nested looping works. So now we need to make the um, element, or we need to make a new entry into our dictionary that is that has the key of a tuple of x and y. Remember, these are the coordinates here. And the value assigned to that will be none, because there's nothing there. And we want to know if we're going to uh, walk off of the world. So else, if tile name, excuse me, if tile name is equal to spawn tile, and again, you can name all your stuff whatever you would like. You can, uh, so I'm, I made everything with tile at the end, just so it has a little bit of a naming convention. And just so I don't get an error, I'm going to, heck, I'm just going to do that. There we go. Okay. And then, so, once we find a spawn tile in our, um, in our map, we need to put that into our dictionary, which is at those coordinates x and y. It's literally doing the exact same thing we just did. And right now we're going to um, refer to an, a class we haven't made yet. Um, don't worry, uh, we'll get there. It'll be, it'll be all right. So now we're going to pull in uh, the starting position variable, and the reason we use global is because everything inside of a, a function is in a local scope, and I, I do believe it doesn't have access to anything outside. So this is a global scope, this is the uh, local scope, so to pull in a global variable you have to put global. Fairly self-explanatory there. So global, and then now we reassign our starting position to whatever the tuple is of our or whatever the coordinate is of our spawn tile, obviously, so they can spawn there. And then now we just want to do the same thing over and over again until we get all of our stuff in there, until we get all our tiles in there. So I have a forest tile, and then just the same stuff. We make a tuple, x and y, and then assign the tiles to it. And each one of these is going to have its own class, so don't worry, we will get to that and uh, probably next video. If tile name is equal to, oh look what I did. That's extremely important. Oh, come on. Okay, then what I have, uh, dense forest tile. And you wanna have uh, your names of your tiles make more sense than you would think, because for example, a dense forest tile, well, all of these can have elemental effects. So let's say the dense forest tile is, that's so dark in there that you have a possibility of hitting something and then losing an item out of your inventory. So you'll see where that comes into play in the next video. Um, yeah, so we do the same thing again. Doo -doo. And then what, what else did we have? Just forest tile, we have a spawn tile, and then I think we have the village tile. All right, and then finally, if tile name is equal to village tile, then we do the same thing. X y equal to. Oh. 
fills, delete cache, add some more. Now what this does is it basically tells the computer, hey, put this class at these specific coordinates and uh, you'll see why we have the coordinates like this with the, uh, with the class we have yet to create. So now that we're, basically we got all of the stuff in now, this is pretty much have our map. Um, so we have our spawn tile, forest tile, dense forest tile, and village tile. So since we wrapped it in a try and accept, always remember to do your accept. Now what I like to do is accept capital E exception as E. This way we don't get a massive, horrible, frightening error. Now we see if this exception, or if this error, is an index error. That way, if it is, then you know that something went wrong when you're trying to go, when you were trying to pull out your tiles. If something does happen like that, let me know, and uh, let me know exactly what you did. Or if you can, then copy and paste the code into the comment. That way I can look it over. So we tell ourselves the index does not exist. And then else, so if it isn't an index error, then we want to print out E. And we just want to quit the program. That way we can go through and, you know, make sure everything works. So now we're going to do a new function called tile exist. This is how we're going to make sure that we have the ability to move. So and all this does is returns uh, level dot get x and y. So what that does is it, oh yeah, I forgot, sorry. You have to have this as a tuple because all of our keys in our dictionary are tuples. So this, uh, the dot get is actually a built-in function that any dictionary has access to. So when we do a got dot get, it looks for the key that you put in here and it returns either true or false. And then later we'll be using that to get it, make a check and see if the user can move. So, so that's it. Now we have the ability to load in our tiles. Um, and so go through this one more time and it's a little bit easier just to do this, you know, uh, run through your code before you try to run it just so you don't have to deal with um, trying to find errors. And here's a quick tip. If something goes wrong, look for the simplest thing possible. Something like a, a misspelled word or mismatched quotes, because that just ends up being the, the most, or the, the thing that happens the most often. Forgive me, words are escaping me at the moment. So we made an empty dictionary called level. We made a starting position that has the tuple zero, zero, which all of our tuples are coordinates. We made a load func load tiles function. We opened up our map.txt in read, and then we we called it f, and we assigned the the lines to the variable rows. And then we uh, made a variable x max, which holds the length of those rows. And this this makes um, well when you use dot split, it makes a list. So. And each element in that list will add one to the length, if that makes sense. So when uh, when you do the dot split, it takes all of these tabs and it destroys them and puts the different tiles as single elements in a list. Then we that way we have uh, an actual length. So for example, we have I have five in a row or five in a line. So when you split it into tabs, it makes five different elements. So now we loop through and we go, uh, we say for y, which is the y-axis in, excuse me, in the range from zero to the length of the rows, which is how many lines we have. Okay, so then we made a variable called columns and we said at the y element, so at the current iteration, so zero, one, two, etc. At the y element in row in the rows list, which again is the lines, then we want to split those at the tabs as well. So now we do for make we made a try and accept, and in our try we said for the for x 
in range x max, which remember is the length of um, all our elements in a single line. So in this case, five. So then we made a tile name, which is equal to the column at the x element. So whatever the iteration is, is the x. And then we replaced the new line characters with empty quotes. And now we did, if the tile name is equal to the empty quotes, then we want to assign um, none to the uh, T entry in our level dictionary. So the way that would look, if you were to print it out afterwards, it would be, uh, let's say, let's say, so there's level and that's equal to that, right? So the key would be the X and Y, and then the, um, the value would be none. So this is what it would look like inside of your dictionary, just for a little bit of a visual representation there. And then if our tile name is not equal to none via empty quotes, then we want to tell the computer the tile name currently is, if the tile name is spawn tile, which is, you know, whatever, forget that. <laughs> so if the tile name is equal to spawn tile, then we want to put our spawn point class at the position of x and y. So we want to make a new tuple that, for example, uh, our spawn tile is, uh, I do believe, three over and three down. So it would be three and three, or I guess two and two because everything starts at zero. So it would be two and two, and then assigned to this key of two and two as a tuple. Then you would see that out we would have a class. Now, if you try to run this, you will get an error because we haven't made the classes yet, but yeah, don't worry. And then we instantiated these this spawn point with the uh, coordinates of x and y. We pulled in our global start or our starting position and reassigned that to the uh, coordinates of our spawn point. Then we found our forest tile and we did the same thing over and over again. And then we caught our error. And if it is an index error, then we told ourselves that. And if it's not, then we told ourselves what that error is anyway. That way, in this way, it, you know, exits pretty. We don't have to worry about all those really long traceback errors that are just honestly when you're when you're new it's, it's kind of uh, kind of discouraging because it's like oh no <laughs> the computer hates me and then if we did get that error then we quit then we finally made a tile exists function which takes in coordinates of x and y and then we just return a true or false which is a boolean um if if um if the thing exists, we return true. If the thing doesn't, we, turn, we return false. So that's how to make a world or a, a, uh, a map. Um, hopefully that was fairly quick and easy to understand. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. I'll try my best to help. And all of this will be in a paste bin. That way you can just copy and paste it. But at the very least, I, I would hope that you would, at the very least, just uh, type everything in, just follow along with it and just type it in that way you can get, you might be able to get at least a little bit more of an understanding rather than just copying and pasting code. That, because, you know, you can't really learn unless you actually do it. So, again, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, let me know. Have a good one, guys.